Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Bob Lucas Stadium for this National League South promotion final between Weymouth and Dartford. It's all been almost a full calendar year since these two, two, two teams set out on their campaign in the National League South this year on the 3rd of August, and due to the unprecedented times with the COVID-19, and the 1st of August, 363 days later, the promotion final is finally here. Weymouth managed to name an unchanged team from last week. Callum Wall retains his place along with fellow uh, Bournemouth Lonies, Brennan Camp, uh, Sean Hobson and Jaden Anthony. Josh Wakefield and Andreas Robinson will make up the midfield. Jake McCarthy is expected to drop back into the centre-half role and Jordan Ungalo will move forward again. Don't be surprised to see Cal Kelvin Brooks operate as a right-sided striker and spend most of his time further forward as he did last week. The host, Dar uh, the away side, sorry, Dartford, make two changes from the impressive victory at Haven and Waterlooville last week. Charlie Sheringham, son of Teddy, comes in along with Tyreek Hyde to replace Matthew Biggs, Briggs and Sanchez Ming. Cesse, Ses, uh, who's in goal, he's been uh, formerly on loan at Dorchester, uh, just down the road, and he has also been called up by the Sierra Leone national team. Jordan Winter, Brian Barrett, another international, Tyreek Hyde, as mentioned, also comes in, as one with Josh Hill. Tom Bonner, the captain, retains his place, as does Jack Jeb and Noor Hussein, the Afghan international, who... Um, has been very impressive for Dartford this season. Elliot Romain, Darren McQueen, and uh, the aforementioned Charlie Sheringham take up the make up the 11. Kai Marsh Brown drops down onto the substitute bench along with Sanchez Ming. Preston Edwards, the experienced goalkeeper, is on the, the bench as well. And Lee Noble, the man who scored the goal in the 2012 playoff South final uh, against Welling United, the only goal, who's recently had a testimonial for Dartford and is their longest serving player makes up the substitutes. Uh, I'm Ben Ashford, joined today by John Waldock. And John, you played in big games and big occasions like this. How do you um, how, how do you think the players are going to approach and, and set up? Well, do you know what? I'll be, good afternoon, everyone. It'll be a really interesting game to, to see how the guys set up. But I would assume there'll be some brief messages that will be given by each manager just to give uh, the teams, you know, the minimalist of information, focus on their job at hand, uh, I think it'll be an interesting afternoon. Beautiful day down here in Dorset. Uh, perfect football weather. I think what what I think will be the most interesting part of the game is how the team set up. So last week, Weymouth went for a 3-4-3. It's the, it's the regular formation. I guess they'll set up that way. It'd be difficult to beat. They're well oiled. What will be interesting with Dartford is to see if they opt like they did for last week in a 5-4-1, which they did in the first half or whether they go to the 4-3-3, which is, you know, on occasions preferred, like they flipped to in the second half. Absolutely. It's going to be Weymouth for get us on the way. They take the knee in um, support of the Black Lives Matter movement. It does look as if Calvin Brooks for Weymouth are going to reoperate in as the third striker, as predicted. And it looks as if Weymouth are almost in a 4-4-2 at the moment, with Brennan Camp moving over out towards right back. Weymouth have got us on the way. And we're expecting a bit of a tentative start, aren't we, John? Yeah, look, they've gone quite direct there, which is not not common to Weymouth. I like to get it down in play. Um, but, yeah, it's very direct to start off with. Both teams looking to settle down, get into a bit of pattern. Here comes Jeb, just about crossed halfway. He's got not too many options, but he has managed to feed it down towards Charlie Sheringham, his first touch on the touchline. He's got, been stood up by Brennan Camp, and it comes back out to Jeb. Jeb being forced slightly backwards and he finds Brian Barrett and again a good battle there between Brian Barrett and Kelvin Brooks it comes off Brooks and out for the first throw in of the afternoon yeah good intent set by Kelvin there just closing the ball down putting a bit of pressure on the lad and Dartford still have possession through Jeb he's got support over the outside and it's a good ball in towards the back post and Harfield had to be aware and he was aware good header from Ollie Harfield excellent football from Dartford yeah, definitely, Ben. They've started the better side, haven't they? I think they've uh, come out the trap, but like you said, Weymouth are renowned for being slow starters. Again being faced up, it comes back towards Hyde. Hyde then finds Hussan. Hussan launches towards the edge of the area. Good challenge there. McCoy wins it, and Angalo is going to get there first. He launches it back over the top, and now Weymouth can break on the counter. Jaden Anthony is going to go one-on-one -on -one with the captain, Fono. Is he going to go inside or outside? He goes on the inside. Is he going to dig a foot? He's not going to get a shot away. He gets on his left foot all the way across the six-yard box. It falls back to Angalo, blocked. Excellent defender from Dartford. And there's, there's still alive now. Ollie Harkin is going to try and keep this in play, and he does. 
He's got a couple of yards and he picks his pass. There's a good ball in towards the area. Excellent header from Dartford. What a bit of defending that is from Tom Bonner, but that's better from the home side, John. Yeah, it is. Great defending from Dartford, but certainly come out the blocks there in that passage of play from Weymouth. We'll just see this replay again. Anthony went inside, then outside on his left foot and then pulled it all the way across the six-yard box and it came back to Angalo. Excellent block. Really good defending from Dartford. Yeah, good attack and play by Angalo. You know, really uh, took it upon himself, attacking his uh, defender and, and got at him. Just couldn't get that sort of final bit of quality. Picked on by Sheringham. And it's going to come loose in the middle of the box. He gets a shot away. Callum Ward had to respond there very quickly. It was Darren McQueen who, is the, who was awarded the joint golden boot earlier this week. He managed to get in. And while he was falling to the ground, he managed to hit a left-footed shot, which almost took Callum Ward by surprise. And Callum Ward had to get down very, very sharpishly to his right-hand side to stop that sneaking in the corner of the net. Excellent football from Dartford. From a Dartford perspective, they've, they've started well. You know, they've... They, um, they haven't looked uneasy or under pressure. They're they're well, you know, well oiled, good shape and defensively. So yeah, I, why change it? The right, game's back underway, and Hobson finds McCarthy as Weymouth tried to move forward again. Well, the right footer got a really poor ball, and Tyree Pye picks that up in midfield. And now Dartford do have an opportunity to break if they move the ball quickly enough. They find Romain, who stood up by Harfield. And then a loose ball from Romain, and Anthony did a good job of cutting that one off, and a lovely touch from McCoy to find some space. And then he finds Jaden Anthony, and he's offside. The flag goes up straight away. It did look like he just strayed a little bit quickly. But another warning sign there for Dartford. But again, from both sides there, a couple of loose balls, John. Yeah, I think that's what I was talking about. I keep harping on about the lack of quality that just, you know, on occasions like this, you get found out. But, yeah, good passage of play by Weymouth. Unlucky. Um, I think it's very, very tight, but I think he has just strayed into an offside position there. And as Weymouth just get into the penalty area here, Ooh. and he's gone down Gavin Brooks, and he's looking towards the referee. The referee's having a good, long, hard look at that, and he turns away and gives absolutely nothing in the meantime. Jack Jeb has the ball and lays it off towards Graham Barrett, who launches forward, and Sean Hobson's going to take that out of the air. And he was under pressure, and he has to go all the way back to Callum Ward. What did you think of that? He certainly was asking for it there, Calvin Brooks. Yeah, I think for first impressions, it looked it looked like something. I wouldn't mind seeing it again, but yeah, I'm I'm surprised Dartford had got away with that. But the ball's just gone out for another throw. And we're going to have a throw just inside their own half. And we'll just have a look at this penalty incident again. Calvin Brooks goes in. There was a little tug on his shirt there, but there's not no. enough to make him go down there. And rightfully, the referee had a look at it and waved away Calvin Brooks' protest. No, agreed. But it's been a fairly even game. Dartford possibly have just been the better side. Yeah, I think so. I think that's a fair assumption, I think, um, or a fair summary. I think they've just had that little edge, haven't they? Harfield finds McCoy. McCoy hit it first time. He didn't quite get it as cleanly as he wanted to. And it ended up being easily blocked in the end. Good invention there from Josh McCoy. McCarthy has a lot of time in the air. And that's a really loose ball from Hobson. And McCarthy has to clear. And Sheringham was bearing down on him there. And Bonner, Anthony was offside anyway. But Bonner wins the header. And he sets Dartford away. Hassan plays it inside towards Jeb. And Jeb goes out towards Graham Barrett, who's venturing forward from left back. He goes past camp. He gets to the byline. He pulls it back. It's stubbed goalwards. And it's a oh. And it was a bit of a ping ping pong almost or pinball in the uh, uh, six yard box there Callum Ward made the initial save and then it bounced back off the Dartford player I think it was McQueen and out for a goal kick just one the referee there he's had he's had an okay game so far uh, he's been balanced there he's kept the yellow card in his, his um he's kept his cards in his pocket but just talking about that previous chance for Dartford a second ago um, Weymouth, as you said, very much got out of jail. It was a good save initially from Callum Ward, but it, it bounced back off the dark the player. It could have gone anywhere, couldn't it? Yeah, like you said, it was a bit of ping pong there. I think it was a bit of ball watching on Weymouth's part. I think they got sucked into watching the ball as a couple of players ran off people's shoulders. Green. And it's in towards Sheringham. Good tech on, and Callum Ward comes out and makes an excellent save. Excellent football from Dartford. It was McQueen who found Remain. Remain put Sheringham into the penalty area. He got there just ahead of Callum Ward, who made himself big, as goalkeepers tend to do. And he comes out, and he makes a very impressive stop. And the goalkeeper is holding on to the ball, so I say, a long time there. But I'm not sure Jason Anthony's allowed to stand in quite in front of him the way he was. 
And I think that's the point the coaching staff were making down on the touchline ahead of us, John. Yeah, definitely. They weren't happy with that, were they? He was just trying to obstruct them. And every time he went to kick the ball, he'd step away. And there is the halftime whistle in this promotion final. It's been a, a, an even first half. If anything, Dartford have just edged it. They've created the better opportunities. And I feel like Weymouth, they, as although they grew into the game, they haven't really tested the goalkeeper too much. And I think there's more to come from both sides in the second half. No, I agree, Ben. I think two organised sides. I think you look at quality lacked in, in certain in certain key areas, but there was flashes of good, Absolutely. good play equally. And then we are back underway at the start of the second half. Dartford gets underway and with 45 big minutes coming forward for both these sides, they'll be certainly giving everything and leaving nothing on the pitch today. Brooks can't get that under a spell though. And Jeb Moves the ball down the left-hand side. Remain wanted it to his feet. And he turned around and telling Jeb that he wanted it to his feet. But it went ahead of him and out for a goal kick to the hosts. Sese, the goalkeeper, has come right out to the left touchline to take this goal kick. Free kick, rather. And right-footed, he does, in towards, in towards um, Elliot Remain. He does get the flick on, but it's cleared by Weymouth, helped on by Robinson, back from Anthony, and then launched up in the air towards McCoy, headed clear really well. And then it was Hussain who managed to get in ahead of Robinson, and then he got his foot to the ball. Robinson is a judge to a foul, Hussain. Did you see a foul there? I didn't, to be honest. I wouldn't mind seeing that again. Just seemed like a, a just a coming together of the two players. We could well be wrong. Um, but the free kick's been given on halfway to Dartford anyway. Not a lot I in it. I don't see a foul in there personally, but Jack Jeb is going to be able to take this free kick on halfway for Dartford. Back into the edge of the box. McCoy goes over looking for a free kick from Josh Hill, not given. Josh Hill then with his right foot up, headed up in the air. It falls back to the edge of the box and a great strike just wide. That's unlucky. That's probably the closest that either side have come at the start of the second half. Good football from Dartford from a contentious free kick and a, a great effort to just sell wide of the post. Yeah, great connection on the ball. Yeah, unlucky. And look, he definitely started the better side, Dartford. Corner from Harfield. In across the six-yard box, it could bounce anywhere. Oh, my goodness. Eventually, Dartford managed to clear. It drops to Wakefield on the volley. Good volley on target. And that's the first save, really, that Cesse has had to make this afternoon. My goodness, where did that corner drop in the six-yard box? It could have found anywhere. Yeah, great strike by Wakefield. Here comes Dartford in the meantime with Jeb. They've just crossed into Weymouth territory. Right footed out towards Romain, who's got some room. He hits it first time in towards Charlie Sheringham. He couldn't take it on his chest. He tries to put it into the path of McQueen. He feeds Romain. Romain's come back from an offside position. The flag goes up, and that was a waste, really. But there is the danger of being caught on the counter attack from a Weymouth point of view. But I want to go back and see this um, the chance from that corner because I want to see where that ball bounced. And you'll see here, the ball comes across a dangerous corner from a half field, and it's sort of bounced off a dart for player, and nobody could get control of it. And they managed to clear, and then the volley from Wakefield, or the half volley from Wakefield, straight into the arms of the goalkeeper. But at least it's a shot on target and a little bit more intent from the home side. Yeah, good, good quality, good technique by Josh. Dartford have picked up position with Brian Barrett again in the left back position, and then out towards Jeb, who's got some room, and now he's got the overlap lap and run of his left back. He cuts inside and uses him as a diversion there. Finds Hussain. Hussain, lovely ball in towards Sheringham, laid down towards McQueen. He gets the half volley and is slightly tame. He got it on target, but Callum Ward just takes it in the bread basket and it was comfortable for him in the end. Yeah, it was. You'd be disappointed not to just gobble that up, wouldn't you? But well, Jack Jeb's been very lively as he come on. Hussain is obviously a very, very talented midfielder. And Sheringham did the right thing by heading that down and a good volley from the league's leading goal scorer, McQueen. Thompson takes it on his knee. He uses Brooks' run as a diversion, but he's got no support now. He's running down into a channel, keeps the ball in play, and he's done really well, Ben Thompson, and he's still going. He gets into the penalty area. Can he create half a yard on his left foot? He can! What a save from Sese! My goodness, excellent work from Ben Thompson, but that save from the goalkeeper trumped anything that Callum Ward did in the first half. Yeah, great driving run, wasn't it? Coming he, onto his left foot. He got inside. down into the channel. He's always looking to get onto his left foot. He created the half a yard into the near post and excellent reactions from the Dartford goalkeeper. 
that's why he's been called up to the Sierra Leone squad. Wakefield picks up again. Anthony lays it off to Harfield, who's been everywhere in the past couple of minutes. Out towards Wakefield, a quick look over his shoulder to see what runners he had. He finds Whelan. Whelan finds half a yard on his left foot. Great tackle. It falls out to Anthony, blocked in the box. It comes back to Jaden Anthony. He takes one touch. He's going to fall to Brennan Camp. Camp finds Brooks. He's got the runner, he goes inside on his left foot. But, oh, Brooks, he just leant back on his weaker left foot. He's down holding his leg there, and the referee, the Dartford players, are walking away. Brooks is claiming that he may have been fouled, but he doesn't look happy. Brennan Camp is going mad. I think he's going to talk his way into the book if he doesn't walk away. But we're very concerned at the moment about the condition of Calvin Brooks. We'll just see this replay. It comes to Camp. Camp does find Brooks, he throws, drops the shoulder, cuts inside, and it's just a coming together after the shot, isn't it? Whelan turns it around the corner, Dartford hold it out, but then they find Thompson, Thompson surrounded by um, Dartford players, and then Thompson commits the foul, he went through the player, Wakefield is still sat on his backside, and Jeff moves forward, he got the ball out towards the substitute, Marsh Brown on, on the left-hand side, he cuts in onto his right foot, he gets a shot, and Tom Whelan has just... It may even be Jake McCarthy. In fact, it is McCarthy, sorry. He's got in and he's made a hell of a block. A last ditch block. There's going to be a substitution made down here. I can't see which side are making the change at the moment. But Weymouth Board are not happy at all. Josh Wakefield has had a very solid afternoon. He's currently getting some treatment for cramp. It looks as if McCarthy took that in the, um, the sore region. Um, thankfully, I'm not a physio, so I don't have to go and uh, tend to that. There's. Mark Mosley in deep conversation with the fourth official and Jeb launches the ball all the way across the six yard box and eventually the header came in the referee's seen a foul in there anyway and has blown the whistle but the header went over the crossbar that's unlucky from the darts Brian Barnett Bar Parrot plays inside towards Marsh Brown Marsh Brown is not quite up to the game yet he gives it straight to Harfield Harfield in turn though gives it straight to Winter who's seen again has it in midfield it's under no real pressure Nobody went to close him down. He finally manages to find a, a player and now remain in the penalty area. Oh, he hard and low across the six yard box. He came off the hills of Brennan Camp. And then Murray finds Jaden Anthony. And Jaden Anthony instantly put under pressure. And he's going to give the ball away to Jeb. And he does give the ball to Jeb, who gets a shot away and just drags it wide. But you can't dally on the ball in your own half the way Jaden Anthony just did for, for the Terrors. Yeah, I think a sloppy couple of minutes there from Weymouth. Firstly with Yemi, then with Jaden Anthony. Just getting robbed, dispossessed. And then a shot, shot come off, but unfortunately not on target. Popped it. Goes forward, still going forward. He's got nobody coming to challenge him, but he has managed to find Jaden Anthony. Jaden Anthony now finds Yemi Odebade. Can Weymouth create one more chance? And it's going to be a corner, and Weymouth are going to get one more chance by the looks of things. It's going to be from the left hand side. It's going to be Tom Whelan who's going to jog across to take it. It doesn't look as if Ollie Harper wants to swing this in towards the near post. Can Weymouth recreate the late drama? in the semi-final last weekend. 20 seconds on the clock. It's now or never for one of these sides, and it's Weymouth who are in the ascendancy at the moment. Whelan taking his time getting across to take this corner. It's going to be a right-footed corner. Weymouth players lining up towards the edge of the box. Whelan with the corner over everybody, including the goalkeeper, out for a goal kick, and we are going to penalties. The final whistle goes John Muldock and we have now got the lottery of penalty kicks. The tension is building around here, which is it's funny really. The captains have done the coin toss and we're going to see who is going to step up first. It's very, very quiet in the Bob Luca Stadium. It's, uh, it's quite eerie, isn't it? The referee now talking to the two goalkeepers, Sasse and Ward. He's given them some strict and some detailed instructions. And we're still none the wiser as to who's going to go first. It looks as if Weymouth are going to take the first penalty because Sese is heading towards his goal line. And it's going to be Tom Whelan who steps up first for Weymouth, the man on loan from Yeovil Town. The last game that they played um, 
of the, la <laughs> the, the, the game against Maisden towards the back end of the season. Weymouth had three penalties awarded in that game. Tom Whelan scored the first one in, I think it was six in a row that they had saved, and Whelan scored. He then took another penalty later in the game and had it saved. And they had two saves and one, one goal in that one, which probably wouldn't be enough for them today. However, Tom Whelan against SA as we're underway with these penalties. Can Whelan get Weymouth off to a good start? He steps up, scores, 1-0 Weymouth. Great penalty, great penalty. Took it well, didn't he? Just looked confident as he strolled up, struck and it right foot, top corner. And it's gonna be Jeb for Dartford who's making the, the walk up towards the penalty spot now as Whelan gets Weymouth onto, or into a, into a good position. Callum Ward in goal for Weymouth. He's been involved in the Bournemouth first team squad, training with them in, in pre-season. But it's going to be Jeb to keep Dartford level. Oh, he skied it over the crossbar. It's an awful penalty. He was looking for that top corner. Callum Ward had gone the right way as well. But Dartford have instantly offered Weymouth the advantage. 1-0, one, one taken each. Yeah, the point I was making about, you know, the goalkeepers and what a role they've got to play. Ward was big, he was bouncing around, he's waving his hands around, reminiscing of sort of Bruce Grobola on the old European Cup days in <laughs> Rome. Absolutely. And, and you can't Jake help but think he got under Jeb's skin a bit, didn't he? Jake McCarthy here, who's got the armband after Josh McCoy went off, can give Weymouth a 2-0 advantage early in the shootout. He steps up and scores for Weymouth. 2-0 to the home side. Yeah, very nonchalant, eh? And it's going to be McQueen, Darren McQueen, he's going to come back up for this second penalty for Dartford. And now all of a sudden, after three spot kicks, the pressure is really on McQueen, isn't it? Yeah, it is. McCarthy took that well, didn't he? He, he just strolled did. up, looked Absolutely. He looked used confident. my technique straight down the middle. <laughs> very good. I sent him a text <laughs> while, we were <laughs> while we were filling time. I sent him a text. <laughs> I didn't really, it was a joke. Here comes McQueen though, it's gonna be a left-footed penalty. Joint golden boot, steps up, and it's over the crossbar again. Two misses in a row for Dartford, and all of a sudden, Jaden Anthony has got the opportunity to give Weymouth a full advantage in the shootout. We didn't expect this, John Muldock. You, you can't help but think the occasion's getting to the Dartford players here, I'm afraid. Um, you know, he's had a good game, he McQueen. Looks, he looks, I feel so bad for him. He looks heartbroken coming back there. Yeah, he looked, um, you know, second half, he looked very lively, very confident, but yeah, didn't, didn't, you know, breathe confidence as he walked up there and took the penalty. Jaden Anthony Skied it. on loan. Jaden Anthony on loan from Bournemouth has a chance to put Weymouth even further ahead in this shootout. He steps up and scores. It's 3-0 to Weymouth in the shootout. And it's down to the Afghan international, Hussein. And if he doesn't score, then Weymouth will be a National League team next season. It's 3-0. This is Dartford's third penalty. If Callum Ward can keep this out of his net, Weymouth will be in the National League next year. Hussein has to score to keep the game alive. He steps up, here he goes. And it's over the bar again! Weymouth are in the National League for the first time since 2009! They've won the game on penalties after a nil-nil draw. Dartford missed all three of their penalties. They missed the target. You have to feel sorry for them for all of the work they've done since Steve King took over. But it's Weymouth's day at the Bob Lucas Stadium and Weymouth have got back-to-back -back promotions and they are going to the National League. John Bulldog. Yeah, unbelievable. Lost for words. Lost for words. I think the occasion got the Dartford lads, but amazing, you know, great three penalties by Weymouth. Yeah, Dartford. Yeah, unbelievable. Unbelievable. The occasion scenes. got to them, didn't it, Ben? Yeah, it did. It did. And you feel so bad for them because they didn't, because it's such a cruel way to go out. And they put such a good show in of themselves this afternoon. And you ultimately. You feel for them, but you at the same time you feel pride for Weymouth. You feel um, absolute uh, joy for Weymouth. Uh, 
they've worked so hard this season. The job that Mark Mosley has done since he came into the football club has been absolutely tremendous. And ultimately, this is reward. Back-to-back -back promotions, a lot of people only tip them to stay up this year. They didn't yeah. tip them to get anywhere near the playoffs. And now they're going to be in the National League next season. No, amazing, amazing. You can't help but think, you know, Callum Ward didn't even have to make a save. Exactly. You know, yeah. so they'll be very disappointed, Dartford. It's almost criminal to not hit the target. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And the, the problem is, is that they played so well, and they did so well throughout the... the um, the, 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 the whole game as a whole, they probably had the better chance to win it. Sessi made that ter tremendous save down to his left in the early in the second half, but most of the goal mark action was in the Weymouth penalty area. And I, I just feel like, you just feel so bad for Dartford, but they've done themselves proud today. And you don't, it, for Dartford fans that listen at home, your, your football team have done absolute wonders today. And they're gonna be just fine in the future, in my personal opinion. They certainly deserve all the praise they've had since Steve King took over in October. But today is Weymouth Day. And I'm certainly not going to um, leave out a word for the manager, Mark Mosley. This is now his fourth trophy in three years, Mark Mosley. And he's going to get back in there. It's a tremendous job that he has done. And Josh McCoy, the club captain, who has worked so hard, he scored the penalty that got Weymouth going last weekend. And they're going up to to create this moment for Weymouth. And they are about to lift the promotion final of 2020. They are about to be a National League side. Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations to Weymouth Football Club, who will be in the National League next season. And they've already broken the stand that they've just taken so long to construct. Look at the celebrations down there. Look how proud they are. And they absolutely deserve to be proud of the achievement. Weymouth Football Club are back in the National League. Back in the big time. Back in the big time. Back where they belong. Weymouth Football Club back in the National League. Yeah, the boys will have a fun night tonight, I'm, I'm sure. sure. Social distancing in mind, I'm Social sure. Social distancing, they're going to go out and they're going to have a couple of Coca-Colas, I would have thought. You would think so. And just enjoy themselves, and they deserve it, and look what it means to them. It, they, they work so hard. It's been an absolute tremendous afternoon of football, and we're going to wrap this up. The final score here from the promotion final 2020 was Weymouth nil, Dartford nil, but Weymouth three, Dartford nil on penalties. Thank you very much for joining us. Weymouth Football Club are back in the National League.